Hello everyone, my name is Mayuresh Joshi from office365notes.com. In today's video, we will see how we can create a menu or submenu navbar in Canvas app. Let me show you the final outcome. If you can see on this Power App screen, I have developed a menu bar which will navigate to different screens. So in today's video, we will develop exactly similar menu submenu component in Power Apps. So let's get started. Here is my blog article where I have written step by step uh, actions that we need to perform to develop this uh, component. So let's get started. The first step is to create the screens and you can see that I have already created these 10 screens. The next action is to define the collection. So this collection we will use to uh, set up uh, different uh, uh, menu and sub menu options. So for, for the items for which the parent tab is empty that defines that it is a main uh, menu and for which uh, the parent tab is mentioned as the title property of the main uh, menu uh, so these items are the sub items we have also defined the screen property which will navigate to uh, different screens based on that uh, on select event of that uh, item also uh, we will define the same set of ids for a set of menu and sub menu so if you can see that for this property menu we have defined the id as 1 for this owner menu uh, we have defined the property as 2 so that it will help us to uh, uh, group the menu and sub menu items then uh, we will define the color theme uh, you can use your uh, uh, your choice uh, so i have used two color uh, one is for primary menu color and one is secondary so that i can show a di a two different colors uh, at different places or for the active tab also we will use one variable uh, which will uh, help us to set the active tab property so let me add all these three things uh, in on select property of my app i will copy this and on the on start method i will use this Let's run this. Okay. The next step is to add a component. So we will add this horizontal menu component. Let's set its, its properties as a width as app dot width and height as 70. Also uh, set the field property as transparent and access app scope as on so that it can access the collection that we have defined on start of the app then the next step is adding the rectangle which will show us the static background so let's add the rectangle set its x y as 0 app width as app dot width and uh, the display mode will be disabled also the disabled field will be uh, the primary color which we have used okay the next step is to add a blank horizontal gallery and this gallery will show the parent items from our collection so we will use the items we will group group by those items based on the parent tab is empty or where the id is equal to where tab selected so let me copy this as well and we will add a blank horizontal gallery will set its item property as this one so it will basically uh, group by our collection based on the parent where parent id is blank then uh, the template size would be 200 and show scroll bar is off so template size is 200 show scroll bar as off 
then x0, y0, then width is count rows, self items. So this will uh, define the dynamic width of for our gallery. Then height would be app dot height and template padding would be zero. Okay. The next step is to add the nested blank flexible height gallery and this will show us the child items. So let me copy this formula. Let's add a blank flexible height gallery inside my gallery one. So you can see that this gallery two is under gallery one and I'll set the data source as this one. So that, so that it will only show me the submenu options. We'll set the width as 200 and height as 600. Also, uh, we will hide the scroll bar and template size would be 40. Also, the template padding would be 0. Okay. Then uh, we will add a button. So this button will help us to navigate to different screens. So inside this gallery too, just click on this pencil icon and add a button. So the button property would be width as 0, x0, zero, y0 zero, and width is 200. Okay. Then uh, we will set the dynamic height so that parent menu will have different height and child sub menu items will have different height. Also we will set the border thickness to 0 and border radius as 0. Then uh, the fill property will be uh, this one so that it will show different colors when we hover over it or for the active menu items. So set the fill property. Okay. Then set the text property to this item dot title so that it will show the title of different menu and sub menu items. Also set the on select method so that it will navigate to the screen and also it will update our variable to uh, set the active tab ID. So I will go to the on select property. Okay. Then hover fill will be uh, this one and focus border thickness is zero. Okay, so you can see that now hover effect is there. Then uh, we will add a downward icon which will uh, indicate that uh, that parent menu has its uh, sub, uh, sub menu items. So let's add that. To add that we will add a uh, downward icon and we will set its width to 20, height to 70. And this will be under this gallery. So click on the pencil icon, go to icons and use the downward arrow. Color would be white. X would be 170. Width would be 20. Height would be 70. And Y will be 0. Then the visible property so that it will only show the downward icon uh, for the uh, items which has only uh, sub menu. Uh, in our case this settlement uh, do not have any child items so it should not show this downward arrow so we will set the visible property to this formula so that it will filter out the uh, collection and it will only show for the menu uh, main menu items then uh, we will have to write one logic uh, to dynamically update the height of our component so to do that uh, we will use one trick we'll add one hidden uh, label over here uh, where we will store the height that dynamic height which we need for our component so set the text property to this one so that if you see 
when I when we change uh, when we open the menu the height would be 768 and if we close the menu it would be 70 we will uh, hide this label and we will then create one uh, output property uh, named as flexible height and we will set its value to label one dot text so let's create one output property and it will be the type of number and will set its value to label one dot text and then uh, we will set the height of this component dynamically to the um, horizontal menu component dot flexible height so that uh, you can see that when we expand this it will cover entire screen and when we hide it it will the height will be less and finally uh, to test our um, to test our component we will add uh, this component across all the screens and we will then also add one uh, label uh, we will set its value to uh, active screen dot name so let's add this component across all the screens okay then we will also add one label over here just to uh, show the current uh, uh, tab name or sorry current screen name so we'll set its value to app.activescreen.name let's add this label across all the screens then uh, publish our app let's close this once and let's reopen it so now you can see uh, when i go to screen 2 it, it is showing the current screen name if i go to screen 5 screen so uh, in this way we have developed this uh, menu component in canvas app if you like this video please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and finally thanks for watching have a nice day